All right, so today is uh, the first Friday of the month, the 4th of October, 2024. And uh, usually today, a day like this is actually the day we have the biggest event in Forex trading, which is the NFP, the non-farm payroll. That's uh, the news that reports uh, employment rate, unemployment, sorry, employment change and unemployment rate in the United States. Good morning, Adenuga. So which, and that event will come out later today by 1.30 p.m. But then this morning analysis, we just look briefly at uh, possibilities in the markets in this morning session before that news. Though usually, because of the news, the market may just be a bit quiet because it's the biggest news. So, you know, the market often can kind of uh, be slow or range, you know, before the data is released. But nonetheless, we'll look at pairs that are possible to move in this morning and we'll look briefly at what to expect in the afternoon. Do a more comprehensive analysis will be done for the NFP in the afternoon by 1.15 p.m. So you're encouraged to join us by 1.15. But if I, we're going to have a live trading session today, you know, by 1.15 p.m. The link will be dropped around 1 p.m. Then by 1.15 p.m., we're going to start the uh, analysis session for the NFP. Good morning, Madam Onaji. All right, so let's look at what we'll have this morning. So by 9.30 a.m. this morning, there'll be construction PMI from the United Kingdom and uh, it's a medium impact event. And this news measures the level of the efficient index based on surveyed purchasing managers in a construction industry and actual greater than forecast is good for the currency. So by 9.30 a.m. this morning, there will be that data from the United Kingdom. You know, already we have a forecast. The forecast is 53.1. So if the actual comes out greater than the forecast, we'll be looking at buying the pound. And at that instance, if it's greater than the data will be released a color green. If the outcome is greater, you know, actual greater than forecast, we'll be looking at buying the pound. And uh, if the actual is less than forecast, we'll be looking at selling the pound. So we just look at currency pairs that will technically, you know, likely respond to this event. Do that briefly in the course of this analysis this morning. Uh, please, as you're joining this class, kindly mute your devices so that it doesn't cause any distraction. Good morning, Aldi. All right, so that's all. For the afternoon session, I will leave the uh, analysis for NFP for the afternoon session. But basically, three events will be released simultaneously. That's the average hourly earnings, the non-farm employment change, and the unemployment rate. So the average hourly earnings measures the amount people earn you know, mm -hmm. for the labor. So it's a change in the price businesses pay for labor, excluding the farming industry. And actual greater than forecast will be good for the currency. And uh, the non-farm employment change itself is a change in the number of employed people during the previous month, excluding the farming industry. And actual greater than forecast is also good for the currency. While the unemployment rate is a percentage of the total workforce that is unemployed and actively seeking employment during the previous month, an actual less than forecast is good for the currency. So later in the afternoon, when the data is released, if the data all comes out, you know, uh, let me start with the good. If it comes out all good for the dollar, then we'll be looking at the data having color green and uh, we expect a massive bullish movement on the dollar. And if the data comes out bad for the dollar, that's a color red, you know, then we expect, you know, a sharp decline in the dollar. So I will not go beyond that. In the afternoon session, we'll give more analysis and you know better projections for the news. All right, so I'll flip down to the technicals for what we have this uh, morning session. Now, as I approach the NFP, some pairs are you know on the quiet side, while some seem to have some kind of a uh, uh, pattern which can be tradable. But then this morning, like I said earlier, we're having construction PMI from the United Kingdom and then looking at the GBPCHF. Now, this GBPCHF on the daily time frame, we can clearly see the price, you know, is trading around a trend line, you know, and uh, that's in an uptrend. Now, one of the things we do with trading fundamental events is we look at what is called directional bias. That's a long-term direction of the market looking at the daily and the weekly, you know, uh, chart. Now, on the daily chart here, we can see that price, you know, is trending higher. We're having a higher low, a higher low, 
and another higher low. So price is technically expected to continue, you know, that uptrend uh, movement. All right, so because of that, if you zoom down to the four hour time frame, we can see that price, you know, is trying to have a uh, form what looks a little like a double bottom pattern right here. Guys, NFC sell gold. So we're looking at uh, a double bottom pattern. All right, so we're looking at double bottom pattern. So if the news comes out by 9.30, good for the pound, then we can look at buying the GBP, you know, CHF, because we are having the formation of what looks like a double the bottom pattern on an uptrend right here. So we can just put that at the back of our mind as we approach the 9.30 uh, a.m. news, you know, from the United Kingdom. Now, uh, for the technicals, ahead of the NFP, uh, the dollar index, you know, currently, what I'm seeing on the dollar index that seems to be uh, a probable, uh, a kind of a downtrend because we can clearly see that, you know, on the daily time frame we have the trend line trending downwards, you know, making lower eyes, lower eyes. Technically, we should have a downtrend. So this is the dollar index on the daily time frame. Then we also have price hitting a resistance level also. So we end up having a confluence point right here. That's a point where the trend line and the resistance, both of them meeting. So technically, we might be expecting uh, a scenario where the news may not be too good, you know, for the dollar, because that is what will lead to a decline, you know, in price. I'm saying this all from a technical, you know, purely a technical angle. So I had personally, how just, you know, look out for possibly a bearish uh, movement on the NFP today. But then this is still morning. Anything can happen between now and 1 p.m. But from what I'm seeing at the moment, you know, that's, that's a projection I personally will have, except this uh, projection changes between now and uh, 1 p.m. this afternoon. If it changes, then we'll look at the next thing to do. But currently, uh, this is the view I have of the market of a, probably uh, a downward movement on the dollar. That is a scenario where the data will not be too good for the dollar. And if I switch over to USCHF, there's equally a similar pattern on the USCHF. You know, we, have, we also have a downtrend on the daily time frame, and uh, we have price hitting, you know, a resistance point here, a resistance level, which is also a confluence with the downward trend line from the daily time frame. So we're also expecting a decline, you know, in the dollar. So if in the afternoon, if the news comes out and it's uh, all bad for the dollar, then we should see a sharp you know, decline in the price of the dollar. So we might, we might be looking at selling the USDCHF or on the other hand, we might be looking at buying the Euro USD. So the choice is yours, whichever one you want to take or better still, you'd be better advised when we have the analysis session in the afternoon, which is specific to trading the NFP. For the Euro USD, price is currently on an uptrend on the daily time frame, and we equally have a support. And this is a confluence point here and uh, we might be looking at buying the euro usd so that's just my personal view ahead you know of the nfp now for other pairs that i feel might move or which we could just still analyze for now uh for intraday trading this morning i'll be looking at the euro card All right, I'll be looking at the euro card, and uh, the reason for me looking at the euro card is this: for the euro card, price uh, hit a support level, you know, and close on that level yesterday on the daily time frame. 
So if I will add it as a resistance here, a support, a support, support with a rejection candle, you know, two days ago. So technically, we should be looking at a bullish movement on the euro card. And this is intraday setup. That is, it's a setup that could work even this morning, provided there's sufficient, you know, volatility to push it. Because like I said, sometimes the market can be quiet uh, on NFP days like this. But if there's enough, you know, volatility to push the price, we might be looking at buying the euro card. All right, so this is the setup. We have it, you know, a descending trend line by a falling wedge pattern on the support level, falling wedge on one hour support on daily. So we might be looking for a breakout of price above this current line to trigger a buy on the euro card. So what I'll suggest you do is this. Currently, price is, you know, kind of ranging around this uh minor resistance level I drew over there. Price is in a range. Once price breaks out above this level, you can safely trigger a buy on euro card. This is intraday, this is this morning before the news, you know. And uh, as a confirmation to that, RSI is clearly above 50, currently at one hour, and uh, MACD is above zero. So we're really in the mood for a buy. The only thing we're waiting for is price to break above this minor resistance for us to trigger a buy on the, the euro card. And uh, potential profit can be, let's check, using Fibonacci, potential profit can be in the range of, if we target the next Fibonacci level, just for a quick few pips, uh, that should be in the range of about 24 or 20 pips. <clears throat> From considering the spread of the instrument itself, just in the range of 20 pips, you know, Catching 20 pips early in the morning is not is not bad. I mean, something that can give you some very reasonable uh, early morning profit. Or if you want to take it to the next level, that would be around 55 or 50 pips there about. So you can count between 20 pips on this, depending on how volatile the market is before the NFP. So this is my just uh, major setup for this morning. We're looking for a buy on Euro card. And since we are having a bullish outlook on gold, so, oh, sorry, on the dollar, sorry, bearish outlook on the dollar, we might be having a bullish movement on gold. That's a strong possibility at this point. If the dollar is bearish, then we might be looking at having uh, a bearish movement on gold. But then let, let's just still not uh, preempt the market. Let's wait for what actually happens eventually. But if the news comes out bad for the dollar, gold might continue you know, possibly to hit this trend line from where all things being equal, maybe we might have a decline later on or it's continuing going, you know, higher. But that's just uh, the view of the market at the moment because, you know, we have this uptrend line, we have this rising wedge on gold, which has been on for quite a while on the daily time frame. So the news comes out bad for the dollar, gold might either hit the trend line and reverse or might uh, continue going higher. All right, that'll be all from my end this morning. So let me just give a little recap. This morning I've analyzed, you know, just a brief view of what to expect for the NFP. Uh, I said I'm bearish on the dollar. So I, I looked at dollar index. The dollar index is bearish. USDCHF is bearish. And uh, Euro USD is bullish. So I'll be looking at a scenario where the news comes out bad for the dollar. And we might be looking at selling either the USDCHF or buying the Euro USD. Now, if the dollar comes out bearish, if the news favors a bearish dollar, then likely gold might go bullish, you know, in that uh, instance. Then I analyzed uh, the GBP CHF ahead of the GBP news by 9.30 a.m. And I said, I'm bullish on the GBP. I'm bullish on the GBP. So if the news comes out by 9.30 and it's good for the pound, then you can safely buy the GBP CHF. And I said I'm also bullish on the euro card on one hour. This one is an intraday setup, which can trigger this morning, all things being equal. Now, finally, I have a setup. I just uh, cited it now. Uh, it's a swing. It all depends on how the market moves today, whether it will be triggered or not. But then this is just a swing setup. We can, we can all wait and you know really milk the market from the move that will happen from this post-NFP. This will be after the NFP. It's not something that we can trade now. 
but it's something we can put our eyes on uh, as we end the week and approach the new week. And that's the New Zealand JPY. And I said earlier in the week that most of the JPY pairs are expected to sell, even though the better part of the week, most of them are buying. But I think it's just the market is getting set for the decline on the JPY pairs. And I'm putting my attention on the New Zealand JPY. Now, for New Zealand JPY, price eat a support turned resistance level here on the daily time frame. So technically, that should give us a bearish you know, movement on the New Zealand JPY. And uh, on the second look, if you go to the four hour, you discover that it's equally forming a double top pattern, you know, which will further lead to a decline. So the only thing we're waiting for now is for price to break out below the neckline region to trigger a massive, you know, bearish breakout on the New Zealand JPY. Again, this is a swing setup. It's not intraday, so it will take some time for it to evolve. Once price breaks out below the neckline, we can safely trigger, you know, a sell on the New Zealand JPY. So we have the, the general bias for New Zealand JPY is bearish, completely bearish. And uh, profit potential for this trade setup uh, can be in the range of, you can see the, the neckline is just around Fibonacci 30.2. So Fibonacci 50 can give uh, roughly 70 pips to Fibonacci 61.8 can give about 140 pips and to Fibonacci 70.6 can give about 240 pips thereabout. So you don't want to miss this opportunity if you're a swing trader, just uh, patiently wait. Let's see how the NFP goes and we can look at taking a sell on this, if not today, possibly on Monday thereabout or any time price is able to break below the neckline. All right, so that'll be all from me this morning. I'll take questions and uh, we'll round up this analysis session this morning. So I have some people dropping questions here, requests. Let me look at them. Uh, Mr. Otto Victor is asking about GBP USD. So let's quickly look at the GBP USD. Now I want to start a word of caution. Today's NFP, if you have any open trade, you know, kindly make sure you have a stop loss in place. It's very important. We don't know yet what direction NFP will go. Whatever I've told you is just purely what I'm seeing from a technical projection, you know, we don't control the market. The market will have to do its thing. If everything goes fine and uh, the news triggers in our direction, all well and good. Now, if your trade is opposing that direction of the dollar I've given, then it's just best that you make sure you have your stop loss in place just in case things don't go your way. You know, Don't leave it open-ended. It's better to minimize your losses early rather than allowing it to run you know, far. All right, so for GDP USD, well, for GDP USD, it all depends. All the dollar pairs today is the NFP that will decide what happens to them. And then the week I gave an outlook of a bearish GDP USD and price really crashed in line with my analysis. And so far, price has dropped to the tune of about 240 pips in line with the earlier bearish analysis I gave about the GDP USD on Monday. So this instrument for me, it has done the move it's expected to do for this week. So even if you look at the Fibonacci level, it's even reached Fibonacci 78.6. I don't expect further movement you know, on this one. I don't, I don't expect it for that drop. I'm not saying it cannot happen, but technically this guy has done what it's expected to do. So if the news comes out, you know, bad for the dollar, like what we're seeing technically now, then that means this guy might reverse. Now, I'm not saying take a buy signal now. Please don't misquote me, but that's what may happen. If the news comes out, you know, bad for the dollar, we might have a bullish movement on the GDP. So if you are not, you know, if 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 you, if you have been on a sell trade, I think it's time for you to close that trade. You know, if you've been on sell all week long or you just entered the sell trade, kindly make sure that trade is closed or better still make sure you have a stop loss in place just in case things didn't go as planned. If the news comes out good for the dollar, Fine, that might be a drop. That might be a further drop on uh, the GBP USA if the other, other side is what happens. It comes out good. But if it comes out bad, then GBP USA will just go. But for now, there's no trade around this instrument. It's in a range at the moment. So I will advise you, you, I won't say trade with caution because I don't even want you to take a trade on it now because NFP is just, you know, it's exactly 7.30 a.m. NFP is in four hours from now. So we should be very cautious about even placing uh, any trade, especially any trade on the dollar. You may trade other uh, cross currencies, but as much as possible, avoid the major currencies this morning because 
the NFP is what will decide how the dollar will move. New Zealand USD. I gave an outlook or a bearish outlook for New Zealand USD also earlier in the week. And I said it was bearish and it has done what I expected it to do. So please, I will give all these analysis. Let's try to follow them as much as possible. New Zealand USD has gone bearish this week, but currently resting on Fibonacci 61.8. So far from the, the, the actual move started from this uh, neck, sorry, head and shoulder pattern up there. And it was able to do a total of about 143 pips this week. So with price resting at the Fibonacci 61.8, that level is acting as a support level. We might expect a bounce from there. Again, if the news comes out good for the dollar, well, price may decline further. But if the news comes out bad for the dollar, we might see a bullish movement of the New Zealand USC. Currently, there is no signal. And I emphasize again, as much as possible, it will be advisable to, to, to be careful of taking fresh trades on the major pairs this morning because NFP will still decide the final destination of the dollar in the afternoon. So I've looked at JPUSD, New Zealand USD. Okay, DJ30. All right, Mr. Fanny is asking about DJ30. Cat CHF, you have a running buy trade. How? Cat CHF, you know, reversed into his cell yesterday. Um, that's for Emmanuel. If you're on a sell trade on CAT CHF, you need to be careful with that. If you're on a buy trade, rather, you need to be careful because this guy is selling. And see how my trend line, it's one of the pairs I'm, I'm, uh, I'm on, it's, it's on a sell. It's on a sell. If you check it, see, that's why you need to analyze the market. Don't just take random trades. My view on the CAT CHF price, you know, we have a descending trend line from the daily. Uh, price came close to the trend line here. We had a rejection candle closing yesterday. So technically, it's a sell. It's a sell on cash CHF, you know, right from the daily time frame. And uh, if you go down to the one hour, on one hour, we ended up having a head and shoulder pattern, shoulder, head, second shoulder, and it's selling. So you can't be on a buy trade. If you're on a buy trade, I will advise you to close it. This is a sell trade. It's, it's a sell it's a sell setup we have and price is even then the trade is even getting exhausted because price is about to approach Fibonacci 50. And if it gets of it, it's just like a peep or two away from Fibonacci 50. So I'm not saying close the buy and enter a sell because at Fibonacci 50, two major levels price will reach 50 and uh 61.8 and it can reverse from any of those two points and it's close to 50 now. Will it get to 61.8? I can't guarantee that. It depends on the market movement. But anything can happen from this point. So if you're on a buy trade, to be honest, that's a wrong setup. You might have to close that trade. DJ30, uh, let me attend to Mr. Fanny's request. That one just came up. I just cited it and I have to address it immediately. DJ30. All right. For DJ30, I remember saying earlier in the week that I had a bearish outlook. Yeah, that was a range, but it has moved bearish to an extent like I saw on the chart. There's a daily time frame. We might be expecting the further bearish breakouts, but then price needs to break this minor support level. Price needs to break that level. So you can see that support zone with a trend line. If price breaks it, then we'll see a sharp decline on the DJ30. It's a four hour setup. So trade with caution. Trade with caution because this is a, a very, very volatile uh, financial instrument. So trade with caution. But what we're waiting for is a breakout be below the support zone and the trend line to trigger itself on DJ30. GBP JPY, okay, that's Mr. Raju. I 
Like I said, most of the JPY pairs are on the decline. If you're not yet on it, I will advise you to stay out. But if you're on it, have a stop loss in place because of NFP. That's the best advice I can give. Now, for GBP, JPY, this is my view. It's the same thing as what I have on the New Zealand JPY. We have a descending trend line from the daily time frame. And uh, this is where price hit yesterday. Technically, we expect a bearish continuation. But on the other hand, also, this is equally a double top pattern, which will give us another bearish uh, movement. So we're looking for opportunity to sell. Let me see, is there any other view? Okay, no. Just the descending trend line and uh, the resistance from the double top pattern, which is this region. So we have a confluence point mm -hmm. here, and that should lead to a decline. So we we'll flip to the four hour. All that is on the daily time frame. Is there anything on weekly? Uh, let's focus on the daily. All right. So on the four hour, now this on the daily time frame is a double top pattern. So we're waiting for price to break out below the neckline. It's a swing setup. So you can have the swing. You can have the neckline up there. Still okay. So whenever price breaks below here, then we expect a massive, that is below this region, we expect a massive bearish breakout on the GBP, JPY. And profit potential will be in the range of, if we take the lower shadow to this region, that means we're looking at profit in the range of about 140 pips to Fibonacci 61.8, about 340 pips to Fibonacci 78.6. So we have a kind of a medium term uh, trend on the GBP JPY. I believe this will move more next week. You know, it's a swing setup. Let's just wait for NFP to come and go. Then we see the breakout, we trigger it and ride, ride the GBP JPY ad, you know, to profit. So that's my view. I'm bearish on GBP JPY. Mohamed Sanusi is saying my voice is not clear. Is that, can somebody else confirm that? Is my voice clear or not? I need, okay. Um, Sorry, I would rather prefer you type a yes. Somebody was causing a nuisance. I had to mute the class. So if my voice is not clear, please type a yes so that I can know and uh, we'll see what to do. Oh, Okoyemi is saying the same thing, not clear. Okay, that might be network. Network has been bad, very, very bad lately. Network has been very, very bad lately. So that might be the network issue. Sorry about that. Okay, give to you saying my voice, the network is not stable. Yes, it's a network. NAS 100, I'm on a cell. That's a great mic. Let's confirm that. Yes, NAS 100 is bearish. You can see how I gave the setup earlier in the week. Uh, the only thing is just that it's ranging at the moment. This is the range. So if price is able to break out below the range, it should continue selling further. But since there's NFP, I would suggest you have your stop loss in place just in a case things didn't go as planned. So that's for great Mike. Recap on Euro USD. We are bullish on Euro USD, Mr. Sonny. We are bullish on Euro USD. But please, I, I, as like I said, avoid placing any here any trade on the major currencies before the NFP. Okay, Mr. Raju. Um, if you're a client with PU Prime, just to reach out to your account manager. The account manager will add you to the group. So just reach out to your account manager. That's uh, Mr. Raju Akman. Okay, I think many people are not really hearing me clearly due to the network, but I've answered everyone's, uh, all those that have requests. I've attended to everyone on all that. So I think we should just bring the class to a close. So please don't forget by 1.15 p.m. this afternoon, we're having the NFP live trading session. The links will be dropped by 1 p.m. So that you can be a part of the class. Don't forget, it's a funded, it's for funded clients. 
So make sure you have funds in your account to trade NFP live with us this afternoon. And if you don't have an account with PU Prime as I speak now, just go straight to our website, www.puprime.com. I'm dropping the link in the comment section, puprime.com and uh, open an account. Mr. Sonny, I did not say bearish on Euro US. I said bullish. We are bullish, bullish. We are looking for opportunity to buy, but we are not buying until the news is released by 1.30 in the afternoon. But technically, that is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that the dollar is bearish on both the dollar index and USD CHF, and I'm seeing that Euro USD is having a bullish outlook. But we're taking no step now until 1.30 in the afternoon. All right. Uh, Madam Onagia, GBP, JPY, and DJ Tech is swing trade. He says GBP, JPY is a swing trade. That one is a confirmed swing trade. Let me confirm DJ30 again. Uh, yeah, DJ30 also should be a swing. It's a swing. This DJ30, price needs to break that support zone and trend line to sell for that. It's a swing. Both of them are swing. Okay, so that will be all for this morning session. Take care and uh, see you by 1.15 p.m. in the afternoon. Bye-bye. You're welcome. So the link to this analysis will be dropped in the WhatsApp group, or you can just head over straight to our uh, tele uh, sorry, our YouTube channel, PU Prime Africa. Just go to YouTube and type PU Prime Africa. You can see the vid this video. I'll drop it immediately so that I can watch it and uh, you know have a clear understanding of the class we just had. Thank you to everyone. Bye bye.